Good morning. For the last 16 years, I have been communing with asphalt and concrete. While using my hands to create images with chalk pastels, I tend to get grimy and dirty on urban street canvases, and my fingertips are rubbed raw. Sounds like fun, right? <laughs> Actually, it is. It's a lot of fun. It's my joy, it's my passion, and it's my sustenance. It's called street painting. And for those of you who don't know what street painting is, it's an ephemeral art form that is performed publicly on sidewalks, plazas, and roadways. I'm actually a practicing 3D street painter, which means that I use visual devices such as pers perspective, anamorphic projection to create dimensional illusions on flat surfaces. And for artistic extroverts like myself, it's a great way to practice. <laughs> so you're probably asking, like, how did you get started in this? How did you start learning how to street paint? Well, I wanted to become familiar with what it meant to be as a pavement artist, so I started um, thinking about how, how does chalk work with asphalt? What is the nature of my materials that I'm working with? So like any diligent artist, I went back to the masters. I decided that I could learn a lot from copying or practicing these paintings. But even at that point in my life, I was still interested in personalizing these paintings. I didn't want to just copy something, I wanted to make it my own. So you can see in this picture, I've added a frame around a painting. And sometimes I would edit paintings or um, co create collective compositions based on other parts of different paintings and I'd add things. It was really a lot of fun, but deep down inside, I still wanted to practice original art making. So I wanted to create my own images, which led me to the 3D format. Well, 3D street painting, I thought, wow, has a lot of potential. I think I could discover a lot about this. And it also talks about perception, which I'm very interested in. So for instance, as practicing the 3D work, I would learn about technique. In this painting, you can see I'm learning about depth and uh, things coming up out of the pavement. I also played around with uh, humor and concept. This one shows Napoleon escaping yet again, but this time from his picture frame. And I also address the working surfaces that I was making my art on. So in this slide, you can see that the painting is actually melting down into itself. It's, it's an illusion with the um, asphalt that I'm working on. Same with this painting. I'm more concerned with the surface than I am with the subject matter. So I thought to myself, well, this is really fun. People like this work. I still felt there was a, a space or a distance between myself and the, and the painting. And I thought, well, the viewer is kind of disconnected from the painting as well. So how, how can I resolve that? Well, I started working in an interactive 3D format. I wanted to remove that space. <laughs> you know, I, I, I wanted play to happen. So, so I'm thinking to myself, wow, 3D street painting, this sounds really cool. Oh my God, unlimited possibilities. What can I come up with? <laughs> you know, playing chess with the Dalai Lama. That's what I came up with. Actually, no, I, um, I decided that I, I need to push this and explore this. So my aha moment came when I decided to question, how do I eliminate the space? What happens if I get a viewer in this painting? Well, this is what happens. I wind up creating these interaction, interactive pieces that people can actually play with. So I thought, wow, this is great. I could have people leaping over tall buildings in a single bound. I could have them teetering on mile high towers. They could be navigating across precarious bridges. They could even be escaping man-eating tigers. You know, I, engaging in just about any death-defying feat of art that I could come up with. You can't imagine how excited I got over a couple of sticks of chalk and a slab of concrete. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I think back on this and, and my life's history, and I, I think if someone had come to me years ago and said, you're gonna be living your life, drawing images on the street with chalk pastels, I would have thought they were completely bonkers. I mean, who can plan for this? You just can't, but you can be ready for it, for sure. And I was ready for it. So, at this time, I decided to question yet again, how am I gonna bring these paintings to life? What can I do to add moving parts to these pieces? I really wanted to um, push this, push the boundaries of, of what I was doing. 
So I started practicing and exploring at different applications for my work. This is actually a picture of a carpet, a 3D carpet that I designed with an adjacent wall mural. So it would be installed in a, in a room or an environment that would actually eliminate that line between the wall and the floor. I thought that was interesting. And next is a, uh, this is a sketch that I created. It shows a multi-dimensional application, which would be a floor and a wall piece, but also has um, stand-up props, which enhance the illusion so that people could actually, you know, play around with the different levels of this painting. So I was having a lot of fun with this play. It was very creative and exciting. And right around this time, I had become aware of digital technologies that were being used in CG projection mapping. If any of you guys know what that is, it's fantastic, these giant walls of moving images that tell stories. And I thought, I would like to add some movement to my paintings. So here's an example of a large piece that I did, which not only accommodates humans, but also vehicles. And this wound up in a TV commercial, and it was animated, which was very fun for me. So as on cue from the universe, I was given an opportunity to work with a client on a 4D street painting experience. And this actually means incorporated aug augmented reality with 3D street painting. And I'll walk you through this series. This is a vignette that I created of a roadway in Morocco. And this is actually a digitally rendered car that is seen through an iPad application. So when you point the iPad at the artwork, this car actually drives on the road. And it changes in scale and perspective so that you really feel like you're seeing something live. I thought it was super cool. Here you can see somebody playing with the iPad and the car. And the car is actually not there. It's just in the app. Anyway, I thought, OK, I'm moving this to the next level. I really want to put this into my own paintings. So this is a piece that I did for um, an event in Panama last year. And you can see the people are interacting with the chunks of rock and it's flying around. It's a big vortex painting. Now I'm going to show you this video. Keep this in mind while you're watching the next video. It's an interactive application with animation overlay on the video. And it shows a, diff uh, a connection between real time and uh, perceived animation. So what happens is you aim this iPad with the animation app in the iPad at the artwork. And people can actually get into the artwork and jump around and look like they're dodging debris, dodging all kinds of things that are coming at them. It's actually very cool. So I would suggest going over there and checking it out. It's a lot of fun to play with. And in closing, one thing I would like to say is that I believe that potential is to imagination, is to innovation, is to illumination. So through curiosity and excitement, I believe that we can find illumination if we only allow ourselves to explore our wildest dreams. Aren't they as real as anything else in our human experience? And I would ask you, please give them your sincerest attention. Thank you.